Ladies and gentlemen, today I stand before you to share the remarkable journey of our project. Our vision was to develop an innovative game akin to Kahoot and other quiz-based platforms. However, we sought to revolutionize the question generation process by leveraging the power of an API called GPT-3. In order to bring our vision to life, we recognized the need to integrate various backend technologies, which led us to embark on a comprehensive journey that involved both the front end and the back end. To ensure the success of our project, we made a strategic decision to divide the responsibilities between our team members. Mark, with his exceptional expertise, spearheaded the development of the back end infrastructure, while I focused my efforts on crafting an engaging and user friendly front end experience. Now, I invite Mark to shed light on the indig indigenous design of our back end architecture which form the backbone of our project. So, the technology stack utilized for the backend comprises Node.js as the JavaScript runtime, Redis with the Redis JSON module for the database, and Svelte for the frontend. The backend architecture is comprised of meticulously crafted JavaScript modules that seamlessly integrate to form a comprehensive system. The controller modules orchestrate the flow of data and maintain the game state by effectively communicating data and questions to the user and ensuring the Redis database remains synchronized. In parallel, the service modules adaptively oversee the socket.io server responsible for facilitating the real-time communication. The primary objective of the backend was to establish seamless asynchronous operations, facilitating concurrent connections from numerous users. The Redis database was carefully selected for ex exceptional speed and effortless deployment, seamlessly integrating with Socket.io to effectively transmit JSON data to clients, leverage the robust capabilities of Socket.io to establish seamless real-time communication between the front-end and back-end components of our application, seamlessly integrating with our client-side rendered single-page application architecture. Please allow me to present the code for the project. <laughs> Okay, so here's our main file, and it takes care of basically all of the sockets that get sent to the backend from different clients, like the player clients that are running the game and the main client that starts the game. So, so we have sockets like join in, so that's when the user logs in, um, sockets like check ID and create game. Now this isn't finished yet, so it's missing some important ones, but um, yeah, we just didn't have time to finish it. And those controllers and services that I was talking about earlier, those are basically different modules that I've created for organizing the code a bit better. So the controllers, they just control the data and state of the game. So in here, um, we have all the asynchronous functions that deal with joining users to the database, checking the IDs, and um, the other module is like server module. It just takes care of setting up the socket.io server. And yeah, so this is our main file, like I said. And every time one of these sockets gets called, we call another function. So like join user calls function inside of the join module. And this is gonna check right here. It's gonna check in the Redis database if the user already exists, so the username. Um, and if it doesn't, it's just going to add the user into the Redis database. And yeah, so I'm going to demo it right now. So this is our main game. So this is a temporary page, but I'm really only going to demo this login, which right now it works. So basically, a user would just enter the code. Right now it's set at 1235. So when you click enter, so right now it just sent a socket to the server and the server checked if the ID was valid. In this case it was because it now says enter nickname. So here you'd enter a nickname, um, like Mark. But I've already used this nickname in the past, so I'll just enter a new one. And it's right there. So the nickname is valid, so it added the user into the database and now it's waiting for the other players. And right here is the Redis database. So the way Redis works is you have keys, which 
have a value and that's how you access the each element in the database basically so it's a key pair database and right here um, the way I have it set up is the key of the elements in the database is the game pin and then this is basically just the Redis document with all the JSON so this would store the questions, the answers, the correct answers so right now this is just a um, template and this is the users so it's just a JSON list and right here so you can see the one I just made right now and it stores the ID of the socket and eventually here it would store the scores that they scored so then the server can calculate that yeah that's basically it for the database and now Aaron is going to talk to us about front end and how it effectively communicates with the back end in terms of the front end development we opted to utilize a framework called Civel which proved to be an exceptional choice the unique advantage of Civel is its ability to be coded in a manner reminiscent of plain HTML and CSS, enabling a streamlined development process. By leveraging the power of Svelte, we were able to seamlessly bundle and convert our application into vanilla JavaScript. This transformation provided us with the numerous benefits, making the decision to adopt Svelte as our framework an easy one. Without further ado, I would like to pass it on to Mark who will delve into the intricacies of how he meticulously designed the layout for the actual quiz. So basically, this is the main part of the quiz. So this is the part that the users are gonna see, the questions, and it gets displayed to you like this. So there's four choices and you can click any one of them. And we have some animations, but right now those don't work. So I'll show you how we are trying to make this as responsive as possible so users on like mobile devices they can like still use it so as the screen size changes so does the view and once it goes under 600 pixels so you'll see it switch so it changes the layout so now if you're on a phone for example um it basically it's like a galaxy s20 you can see here so that's what it would look like on a phone and same way, you can just interact with it, but it just changes the layout, basically. And yeah, and so the code that does that is basically this. So we just have a lot of CSS. Yeah, a lot of CSS. And yeah, that's basically it. So we're just looping through, basically just an array with the questions, and we're just creating those elements right here. Um, we're telling it what to do once we click on it, and that's just an animation. And yeah, it's filling in answer, and yeah, that's basically it. So now Aaron's going to talk about the pages that he designed. So what I did was I created this thing, and so what, there's a QR code to scan, and there's a pin that you can input so you can join the game. So this is the admin page basically, and this is where this is the main page where the pin gets displayed, and where the this is the game controller page, and well, this is start button. This is the to decide if your music wants to be on or off. Player count, the title of the game, and the players. So I made this by doing grid grid to cover make it into three sections the first section was also in grid two and it got split into three section and the second section though was actually in flexbox so it became flexible because as user usernames gets added it moves on to the next column as there become as it becomes full capacity and this is also great. Let me demo how if you get if you add like two bunch of more users, then it will go from it will go like that. Yeah. I also made a media. I use media query to like do the viewer responsive thing, and as it gets smaller, the QR code disappears and. 
then the pin disappears, then it gets smaller. And that's basically the size of the phone. And that's how it, so you could be a you could be a controller on the phone. Like that. But okay, so that's the that's how it works. And what I'm exporting is or what I'm giving to the server is the usernames, users. So the usernames could be inputted into this and the music on, check if music is true or false. And game ID, you get the game ID. I also did this thing to get the viewer width and to like control stuff with it. And this, this is the code. And then this is all the media query stuff. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe.